o'clock. So without uh, any further delays, I am happy to welcome back to PIDC with us, LeVar Haffney. LeVar Haffney is the Managing Director of Vidare, a consulting practice. He is uh, from New York, has a strong uh, track record in working with small businesses as a business consultant, as a writer, as a speaker. Locally, he is the chairman of Spectrum Health Services, one of our great federally qualified health centers here in the city. And he has been working with PIDC uh, for a little while now. So we are happy to have him join us again in our business builder series. And so LeVar Haffany, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Marla. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, we really do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us this evening. Uh, we do have some information to cover. Uh, this particular webinar is called Technology for the Small Business Owner. And there are going to be some things that you've seen before, but we hope to bring you some new information to help you empower yourselves and your business as we move through this pandemic. And with that, we'll jump right in. I'll just uh, run down the agenda really quickly. Next slide, please. Uh, the new normal and why it's important, as we all know, the, our world has been turned upside down. Uh, fortunately, through the use of technology, there are ways that we will continue uh, to operate and hopefully expand our business by incorporating some of these ideas that that I'll discuss this evening. We'll touch on accounting, collaboration tools, CRM, which is customer relationship management, document management, HR or, or human resources, marketing, some productivity tools, some payment information, uh, strategies and tips that you can implement immediately. We'll also have some Q&A towards the end. And you can always drop your question into the chat box and one of our moderators will, will uh, Go ahead and read that out loud and I'll provide, I'll be able to provide you with that information uh, or at the very least point you in the direction uh, to help you answer that question. And finally, we'll also share some resources that you can um, use in your business. Next slide, please. Now the new normal and why it is important. Uh, if you have been an attendee in previous PIDC webinars, uh, you know that we have been discussing how business owners have experienced quite a few challenges uh, at, during this pandemic and ways that we can figure out how to continue to operate our business and serve our clients. The most important reason for you to incorporate a variety of different technological features is for business continuity. Many business owners just were not prepared. And these are not only small business owners, these were medium sized and large business owners as well, or large businesses as well. Uh, no one could have planned for this. By incorporating a variety of different technological features, you can ensure that your business continues to operate in the event that we experience a challenge such as a pandemic or a situation that incapacitates um, a different variety of businesses. Process optimization. By streamlining your business and using these tools, it's going to be easier for you to continue to serve your clients. It'll also make your employees more productive. It improves your performance. When you improve your performance, you improve your profitability. We are in business to turn a profit and incorporating these technological solutions will certainly help you do so. And scaling opportunities. With the different technology platforms we have today, you need less individuals, so less labor equals cost savings, and that will allow you to reinvest those savings directly into your business to help you scale faster. Next, please. Now, the first technology platform that each of us should have incorporated in our business is our accounting system. If you're using a platform such as QuickBooks, you may be familiar with the QuickBooks desktop version. 
You may be uh, familiar with some of the other desktop software that is out there that's been on the market for quite some time. But you may also be using a cloud-based provider such as QuickBooks Online or Xero. Uh, there's NetSuite. There's also Wave Accounting. There's Zoho Books. There are a variety of cloud-based platforms. If you're not using a cloud-based platform, you're really holding yourself back. These platforms allow you to share data with your accountant or bookkeeper in real time. They integrate with point of sale systems. They also integrate with time tracking, payroll solutions, payment solutions. And you have the capacity to fully automate these particular platforms. For instance, with QuickBooks Online, uh, there's a service called QuickBooks Live. You can hire a bookkeeper remotely and they will reconcile your, book, your books every month. Depending on the tier of service, they can provide you with a full suite of bookkeeping services to help you manage your financials so that you can focus on what you do best, which is running your business. Next slide, please. So these are just some of the most popular providers. You have your QuickBooks Online, Oracle's NetSuite, Zero. you have Wave Accounting, and I also mentioned Zoho Books but a simple Google search will pull up hundreds of different providers, uh, which are cloud-based and will enable you to find the right solution for your financial management needs. Next slide, please. Number two, collaboration tools. Many of us are familiar with different collaboration tools um, like Slack or Facebook Workspace. These help you communicate with your clients and your team in real time. Think of it as uh, if you're using a Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. These particular platforms are very similar to the social platforms, but they're exclusively for business. Let, they allow you to collaborate using any device. You can also uh, make video calls, audio calls, and whole webinars through these particular platforms. You also have the capability uh, to record and play back any meeting that you have. You can record educational videos, training videos, and you can use these platforms in, in a variety of ways to help your team become more productive. Next slide, please. Now, as I mentioned, you have platforms such as Zoom, which a lot of us have become familiar with during the pandemic. Uh, Zoom was a very uh, a little known app prior to this, but overnight they exploded. And if you've watched their trajectory uh, on the stock market, a lot of people have made money by investing in Zoom. Slack is another platform that people have been using for quite some time. Uh, Slack is a, it's, it's a very interesting tool. It's uh, essentially a real-time communication device or a communication platform uh, that also has video capability and, and document sharing capabilities. Very popular with large businesses and small businesses alike. You also have Microsoft Teams, which is catching on. If you have uh, Office 365, you also have the opportunity to take advantage of Microsoft Teams, share some of the same capabilities that you'll see with Slack or Zoom. You can also record your meetings, you can record training videos, and you can share those as well. Google Meet, which is a part of the Google Workspace or their platform, which is formerly known as G Suite for Business. They've upgraded their capabilities and they offer a, a similar experience to what Microsoft Teams, Zoom and Slack offers. And you also have a, a new competitor, Workplace by, by Facebook, which is very interesting because the interface is very similar to the normal social media website that we all know uh, as Facebook, but it, it's primarily geared towards businesses. And if you're, also, if you're already familiar with that platform, it's very intuitive for you. Again, you can share files, videos. Uh, there are a lot of capabilities. Most of these platforms are very similar nowadays. It all depends on what you're comfortable with and what your budget looks like. Next slide, please. CRM. Now CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. If you're not using a CRM tool or platform, you're falling behind. 
because CRM improves your customer service experience. It allows you to capture all of the data uh, that you've generated from your customers, demographic information, income, um, so that you can improve your analytical data and your reporting. It helps to improve your business relationships. You can also capture uh, the data that is provided by your vendors and suppliers and helps you streamline your prospecting. So when you uh, meet a prospect, you can certainly enter the information into the system. You can follow that prospect during the life of the relationship. As they move from a prospect to a customer, you can continue to build that relationship and provide services uh, that will enable you to strengthen that particular relationship and drive more profits. Again, CRM is probably the backbone of your customer relationship process. And it's something that most of us uh, are familiar with. Sometimes uh, small business owners are, are still using uh, spreadsheets in order to manage their relationships. It's worth it to invest in a, a cloud-based CRM platform. That way you can access customer data at any time on any device. It certainly is worth it. Next slide, please. Some of the main providers are Insightly. Uh, they're very big in the small business space. They fully integrate with platforms such as G Suite or uh, Google Workspace. You also have Salesforce. Now, Salesforce is interesting because they work with a lot of large companies, but they also have a small business offering starting as low as $25 a month. By using or utilizing Salesforce's capability and climbing or moving up the tiers as your business scales will enable you to capture some of the the, the robust capabilities that Salesforce offers to larger companies in your own business. Microsoft Dynamics, that's another Microsoft service that's provided within their Office 365 platform. It's a great tool, very intuitive, and it's customizable. HubSpot is another uh, newcomer. HubSpot is interesting because they're actually a cloud marketing platform, but they're giving away CRM in order to generate uh, more attention to their main uh, product suite, which is the integrated marketing. Uh, but their CRM is a, a very interesting tool. As you build your business, you can certainly add different features. And if you want to build out a fully integrated marketing suite, you can certainly do so with HubSpot, Salesforce, Insightly, and or Microsoft Dynamics. There are so many other cloud-based CRM providers in the marketplace. So you don't have to limit yourself to these four. A simple Google search will bring up dozens and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find one that works best for you. Next slide, please. Now we have document management. Now document management is quick and easy online sharing and collaboration. Uh, helps you increase productivity and efficiency enables you or it provides you with airtight data security and file storage and you can access the data on any device from anywhere as we all know the days of filing uh, or keeping documents in a file cabinet are essentially over by working with a document management company such as dropbox box or uh, the google's uh, data storage provider uh, it, it enables you to streamline your business Eliminate paper, which will help you reduce costs and provide you with the opportunity to scale. So as your business generates more data, you can purchase more storage. And in that way, you don't need a computer with, with, with as much storage because you can certainly outsource the document management. So it is worth it for you to invest in these particular tools. If you're using uh, Microsoft's OneDrive, uh, that they certainly allow small business owners to uh, have access to a robust data mat or document management platform, or Google Drive also has a pretty robust platform as well. So it's certainly something you wanna look into. You can easily upload documents and again, access them from everywhere. If you're using another platform which integrates such as DocuSign, you can certainly uh, electronically sign documents. You can also just print the document out. Um, if you need a web signature, you can sign it. Take a picture of it with your phone, re-upload it, send a document off. Very, very easy, very simple, and it will certainly help you streamline all of your processes so that you can become more efficient. Next slide, please. 
So here we see Dropbox to the left, Box, Microsoft's OneDrive, and you also see Google Drive right there. Again, these are probably the most popular providers in this space, but there are so many of them out there. Some of them are industry specific. If you're in the construction industry, there are document storage or document management providers for that particular industry. Uh, so it really depends on what you're looking for, the kind of business that you currently operate or the kind of business that you're building and the capacity for you to manage this particular platform. Next slide, please. Now we have HR, human resources. This is a very important component to your technology stack. Even if you don't have employees, it's really important for you to build out your business's infrastructure. If you are looking to uh, hire or attract and retain employees down the line. Having an HR platform will help you improve employee attraction and retention, helps to increase employee productivity. It integrates with accounting, time tracking, and payroll platforms. And a, a plat an HR platform will help you streamline data security and compliance. Now, this is really important because if you're using an HR, cloud-based HR platform, there are so many different forms and there's so much compliance that a business owner has to keep track of by outsourcing your HR to a firm that specializes in providing these services. They will make sure that you're filing the appropriate documentation with the taxing authorities and the department of labor. What you don't want to do is get so caught up in these administrative tasks that your business suffers because you're focusing on something that is not generating revenue you're focusing on compliance work. You want to outsource and or eliminate the compliance work. Let the people who uh, specialize in doing those things focus on those tasks for you so that again, you can concentrate on what you do best, which is building your business. Next slide, please. So some of the, 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 the well, th four of the uh, largest cloud-based providers include Gusto. Uh, ADP, Zenefits, and Bambi. There are several others, including Insperity and Paychex, uh, which are very large companies as well. Cust Gusto primarily works with small business owners. Zenefits is also a small business platform as well. Bambi is a little different because Bambi allows you to actually outsource your HR to an individual as opposed to a portal like Gusto or Zenefits. And on the, the larger, larger scale, you have ADP. Now, many of us have heard of ADP or we worked with ADP in some way, shape, or form, maybe through a previous employer, uh, but ADP is the 800-pound gorilla in the outsourced HR space. They do everything from soup to nuts. They have a robust platform that not only allows them to provide these services to Fortune 500 companies, but they also provide a scaled-down version which will allow us to incorporate in a, a, a full service HR suite at a reasonable cost. And as we hire new employees, we can certainly scale on ADP's platform. So these are just four of the providers that are out there. Again, Paychex, Insperity, and many others provide similar services. It really depends on your industry and the capacity for you to invest in these particular platforms at this time. Next slide, please. Marketing. Now marketing is going to be one of the main drivers of customer awareness. Uh, what you want to do is if you don't have a marketing plan at this point, you want to use software to create a marketing plan that you can edit, update, and share. Uh, we no longer want to use uh, or create a document that we have to continue to recreate as our business evolves. You want to use something that you can update in real time and you can share with your investors, with lenders, and with any stakeholders who may be interested in the operations of your business. You want to use video marketing. Um, Many of us are not crazy about getting behind the camera, but you don't have to get behind the camera. You can interview your customers. You can interview your vendors. You can interview uh, 
individuals who are in your space. You don't actually have to create videos uh, on your own. You can collaborate with other individuals who are, all, who are already in the space to create videos uh, that you can certainly put on your social media platforms. And you can use social media sites to highlight your business, your expertise, your products or your services if you're not doing so. It's really important that you build out that social media presence for your business and think about it like Coca-Cola. Uh, when you are, when Coca-Cola is marketing, they know that when you see their commercial or when you see their billboard, nine times out of 10, you're not going to go and buy the product right away. But what they're continuously doing is they're reinforcing the brand by using social media like Coca-Cola and reinforcing your brand, continuously putting out videos, continuously putting out blog content, continuously putting out photos. It's going to reinforce that you are the best uh, minority owned construction company in Philadelphia, or you are the best salon in this part of Philadelphia. By reinforcing your brand, it's going to drive business in your direction over time. And you want to use marketing to collect email addresses through opt-in forms and utilize email marketing. Again, staying on top of mind, letting customers know that you're open for business, letting them know that you're having a, for instance, like Amazon, they have Amazon day. Uh, once per year, there's a particular day where, when, where they have these sales. It's like a Black Friday for Amazon. You may be able to incorporate something like that in your business. And if you have a list of 1,500 people that you've either um, done business with or you've connected with in some way, shape, or form, it's a great opportunity for you to drive more business by staying in front of them. So make sure you're figuring out ways to utilize these different platforms and incorporate them into your comprehensive marketing strategy. Next slide, please. Now I mentioned HubSpot and Salesforce earlier uh, because they provide CRM capabilities, but they also allow you to build out a fully integrated marketing suite. By using their CRM, it's very easy for you to leverage your CRM in order to create email marketing campaigns and other what are called drip campaigns or continuously staying in front of these clients or these prospects. And you can do all of this from one platform. Others which are similar are Pardot and Infusionsoft. Now Infusionsoft is interesting, very similar to Salesforce and HubSpot, and it's scalable. So what it allows you to do is to start off with say 100 prospects, and as your business grows, you can add more features. If you want to add email marketing, you want to just add blog content. If you want to add video marketing, you can certainly do so. So as your business grows, the platform grows with you. And I see Paul has a comment, uh, what is, or a question, what is CRM? CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. It's going to be the central location for all of the information, all of the pros prospect information and customer information that's going to drive your business. You wanna, want to operate from your CRM or your customer relationship management platform and leverage that data to create your marketing campaigns. Next slide, please. Next, we have productivity platforms. Now, productivity platforms are interesting. They help to simplify collaboration and communication. They help to streamline processes and save time. They help to organize tasks and simplify your business. And they help you focus on your goals, projects, and hitting deadlines. Next slide, please. Now, many of us are familiar with Office 365. I mentioned it before. You have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, your, your, your Outlook email. Uh, those platforms are, are used every day in millions of, millions of businesses worldwide. It's how we communicate, it's how we collaborate, it's how we share information. It's how we streamline our processes and it's how we get things done. G Suite has a similar platform or uh, Google Workspaces now, a very similar platform where you have your Gmail for business, you have your Sheets, you have your slides, you have your, your uh, Google Meet, 
and you have a variety of other uh, applications that will help you improve your productivity. Zoho also has a suite of services. In addition to their cloud-based accounting platform for small businesses, they have a suite of similar services, uh, uh, spreadsheets, word processing uh, platforms that'll enable you to run your business as if you were using Office 365 or Google Workspaces. Now, Trello is different and it's very interesting. Trello is considered a task management or a project management portal. You have companies like Trello or Asana, which allow you to create tasks. And as you complete these tasks, and you can create tasks and then subtasks. So as you complete these tasks, you can check them off and mark them complete. This is very important if you have a business where you are trying to um, institutionalize certain for, uh, processes and procedures. So for instance, if you're looking to scale and you're looking to hire down the line, you can use a Trello or Asana to actually map out the processes in your business. That way you can bring in someone who can replicate exactly what you're doing. They can take those tasks off of your hands and you can focus on driving uh, another area of your business. This is very important when you're looking again to scale, to institutionalize your business, because instead of writing down or creating an employee handbook, you can do this in the app in Asana or in Trello or in one of the other productivity apps in real time. And as the roles change and become more complex, you can update that again in real time. So it's really important to look into task management and or project management platforms like a Trello or an Asana, uh, because they'll certainly help you professionalize your business and make it easier for other people to uh, take on these processes and procedures and, and perform at optimal levels as you grow. Next slide, please. Now, we all want to get paid. So it's extremely important that we are familiar with the payment software that's available. If you are in a retail business, you should be familiar with point of sale systems. Years ago, we used what were called cash registers. They were uh, very clunky, very heavy, very expensive, uh, but eventually they evolved and became these point of sale systems. Most of them now just consist of a tablet and it's touchscreen. Um, most or a lot of businesses nowadays, especially with um, some of the coin shortages we've seen, decided to just accept electronic payments, uh, primarily just credit or debit cards. These point of sale systems allow you to do so. Many of us have seen these uh, systems and uh, the, the Square Reader or the uh, Intuit Payments Portal. It's just a, a tablet, you swipe your card on the side and the transaction is completed. And the receipt can be emailed directly to you. Very important when you are capturing data because if you have your customer's email, you can put them directly into your CRM system and you can continuously provide them with offers, whether you have coupons or whether you have a sale coming up or if you just wanna share a piece of content, you'll have their information. And uh, that is very important as a business owner for you to have. There are also mobile payment systems. Again, Square has a reader, plugs directly into your phone. Um, you can swipe someone's card and complete a transaction using uh, a smartphone, something that was pretty revolutionary a few years ago, but now it's the norm. If you can find ways to incorporate different payment platforms into your business, it enables you to get fa paid faster, and in that way, it's going to help you to optimize your cash flow. So you want to accept all forms of payment, and you want to incorporate different apps in your business if you're not a retail business, that's okay. You may not need a point of sale, but everyone who's in business should have the capacity to uh, complete a mobile transaction. Next, you have mobile payment apps. Now, these are usually uh, transfers from one account to another. On the personal side, you have your cash apps. Uh, on the banking side, you have your Zelles. So there are different platforms that allow you to send money from one account or one person to another without using a um, card reader or any device that you have, any external device that you have to 
plug into your smartphone or your tablet. Very important for you, very important that you take advantage of these mobile payment apps. And then you also have integrated payment apps. For instance, through the QuickBooks online portal, there is a payment feature. It allows you to easily accept payments, easily or easily send, easily send out um, invoices directly to your prospects or directly to your customers, and then also receive payment directly in the invoice. That way it's one transaction, very seamless. The transaction is recorded. And from there on out, it's up to your bookkeeper to reconcile your books, but you can focus on what you do best and that's serving your customers. Most of these different platforms do integrate with accounting software, but you want to make sure that you're using the right software for you. Some people may gravitate towards QuickBooks Online, which can become a little convoluted depending on your familiarity with, with bookkeeping. Other people gravitate towards Zero. Zero is a little bit more intuitive, it's a little bit more straightforward, doesn't have the a myriad of functions that QuickBooks Online uh, has incorporated into it, but it helps you get the job done. It integrates with a lot of different platforms and it's very intuitive. So by using a cloud-based accounting system, integrating with a payment functionality, it's going to help you get paid faster, generate more cash, and become more profitable at the end of the day. And it also helps to optimize your tax planning. because You no longer have to look for receipts and you don't have to uh, uh, struggle to find this data for your accountant or uh, tax advisor during tax time. All of the reports can be printed out easily and they can be shared in real time. So this is just something that you want to make sure you've incorporated if you haven't done so already. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, Square, uh, you also have on the personal side, Cash App, which is owned by Square. You have Zelle, and there are a lot of banks that are, that are using Zelle and are, are allowing you to transfer money through Zelle. PayPal is probably uh, one of the uh, legacy companies in this electronic payment space, and they're still relevant. Many of us have used PayPal or have a PayPal account. It's intuitive. It integrates with a lot of different accounting softwares. It's a very great, it's a great platform to use. And you also have Intuit Go Payment. And then QuickBooks has their own payment functionality uh, in the QuickBooks online platform. Next slide, please. Now here are some strategies and tips that you can incorporate immediately. Use time tracking software to see where time is spent and by whom. If you have employees, it is imperative that you're using time tracking software. You want to know who's doing what and when it's being done. Uh, I, I, I'm not an advocate of spying on employees, but what I will say is that it's going to help you streamline all of your processes because everyone is accounted for, everything is accounted for. This time tracking software is incorpor incorporates with your accounting software, uh, incorporates with your payroll software, and uh, platforms like T-Sheets, uh, which is an Intuit product, is uh, very popular. There are several others. There are also other ones that, that are industry specific. I know the construction industry has quite a few of them on their own. The retail industry has quite a few of them. So if you do, uh, a bit of research based on your industry, you'll certainly find a version that works for you and that integrates well with your existing accounting platform. Use project or task management tools to stay on top of daily responsibilities. If you don't know what is important at the beginning of each day, then the most important thing is not going to get done. Make sure you prioritize your projects or your task and using software is the best way to do it. Again, you have access to the most important task uh, right in the palm of your hands with our smartphones, and it's going to help you become more productive and more efficient. And also share these, these different processes with your, uh, with your team. Create a digital filing system to make it easier to sort, save, share, and find docs. You can easily do this in the document management platforms. Uh, what you don't want to do is use your email provider as a document filing system. 
it gets way too complicated, way too fast. If you use something like uh, a Dropbox or a Box uh, or OneDrive by Microsoft, it's, it's really easy to transfer attachments or data from your email inbox to the document management system. Very easy to pull it up, very easy to sort it, save it, share it, share it and find it. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to have that digital filing system so that you can recall documents as needed. Develop an efficient email management process to stay on top of your messages. I always suggest, and the email management process goes hand in hand with the document filing system. If you have an attachment uh, that you've received via email, you want to make sure that it's filed immediately. You don't want to wait until the end of the day or the end of the week when you've received 50, 100, 250 emails. You're searching through all of these different emails to find attachments and to organize and file these attachments uh, depending on uh, how their, 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 uh, their importance. So by creating that efficient process up front, it's going to save you time and eventually money and it will be uh, much more efficient for your entire uh, administrative uh, management process. Next slide, please. If you're not doing so, incorporate online invoicing to reduce the cost of collecting payments from customers. It's very, very easy to do. Once you've sent out that invoice electronically, you can send follow-up reminders. You can actually automate the reminders so that you don't even have to think about it. If you're using an integrated payment function, your customer can make the payment directly through the invoice, and that's going to help you with your financial management, your cash flow management, and your profitability. Use online budget tracking to stay on top of and reduce your expenses. Again, if you're using one of these cloud-based uh, accounting platforms, many of them, including QuickBooks Online or Xero, have integrated budgeting features. By getting familiar with these, you can create budgets at will, update budgets, compare uh, targeted budgets to actuals, and see exactly where you are so you can determine where you need to be down the line. Share digital files with your bookkeeper or accountant to improve your bookkeeping. Again, by providing access to your financial management platforms like QuickBooks Online, Xero, NetSuite, Wave Accounting, Zoho Books, whatever it may be, providing that access will enable your accountant or bookkeeper to manage your books in real time. Also, you can set functions or limitations for what they can and cannot access or what they can and cannot update uh, or change. So it really depends on uh, what, you, what you are comfortable with and what you'd like to share with your, 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 uh, your service provider. Create new income streams by selling your products or services online. If you haven't done so already, or if you haven't even thought about it, there's an opportunity, especially now, to sell even more of, of your products or services online. There's so many people that are, that are still working remotely there, with social distancing mandates in place, there are a lot of people that, that spend way more time in the house than they would ha have ever spent in their life. Um, by being able to sell into existing demand, whatever that is for your industry, there is an opportunity to create new streams of revenue. If you're a service provider, uh, you can certainly sell consulting services. Uh, again, think creatively. There are ways that you can generate new income streams. If you're selling a product, you can sell up a follow-up consulting service. Uh, it's, it's really worth your while to figure out additional products and or services that you can sell virtually to generate more income. Next slide, please. Hey, LeVar, we actually have a question in the Q&A from Jeanette. Jeanette asks, okay. oh, wait. I think somebody just answered it. Oh, okay. Um, the question was, what best practice do you have to name documents? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Best practice to name documents. Oh, now that's an, that's an interesting question. I think it really depends on the nature of your business and how you are managing your process. Uh, for instance, I may have a in my document management system, I have prospects, clients, and 
again, it depends on the business because I've duplicated some processes. So I do have a CRM, but I also have a document management system and they do speak to each other. Uh, but I would try to figure out the order of importance of these documents. Is it something that, for instance, uh, is it prospect related? Is it client related? Is it marketing related? Is it operations related? Is it tax related? And I would segregate the files in that way. Uh, again, it's going to look different with your business. If you have a lease, if, if you're renting a space, you're going to have files that are related to that particular lease. So again, it really depends. If you have vehicles for your business, you're going to have files that are related to those vehicles. So it really depends on the kind of business that you operate and the importance you place on those particular files. So I hope I answered your question. Um, next slide, please. Use cloud platforms to share documents. Again, a few years ago, um, many people purchased software and they downloaded the software directly into their, onto their hardware or into their hard drive. Nowadays, you don't have to do that. You can utilize these cloud platforms. Uh, many of them are less expensive. And again, you can access them from any device. You don't need to, con to bring your computer with you uh, everywhere you go or your device with you everywhere you go, but you can access the information from any device anywhere. That's the beauty of using these, these cloud platforms and also scaling. When you need more document storage, you can certainly purchase more. If you need more functionality in your accounting platform, you can certainly purchase that capacity. So using cloud platforms to share documents to help you scale is a, a, a very good business practice going forward. That's the way of the world we live in today. Large companies have been doing this for years. Many of us have probably heard about digital transformation and that's what digital transformation means. It means moving these processes from a hard drive from your personal server to the cloud. Now you may ask, what is the cloud? Uh, the cloud is essentially a, a giant server farm run by different companies. For instance, Apple has its own cloud. If you are an Apple user, um, there are a variety of services that Apple provides and they're all cloud-based, whether it's iTunes or uh, I don't know if it's called Apple Music now, but the, the different services that they provide that are cloud-based are run on their servers. Uh, the data, your pictures, your music, your audio files, your video files, they're all stored on Apple's cloud. Same thing with Google. If you're, you're an Android user like me, then you're using Google's cloud. Uh, Samsung has its own cloud. Microsoft has its own cloud. Facebook has its own cloud. So a variety of companies are offering this cloud or these cloud-based services so that you don't have to store this data on your own devices. Now, many of us may be concerned about our privacy, as you should. So I don't recommend uploading anything into the cloud that you wouldn't want your significant other to see or someone who's very important to you. Um, business data is a little bit different. Uh, of course, if you're concerned about uploading business data into the cloud, there, there, there are ways that you can mitigate that risk. You can purchase your own cloud or your own server that you can access remotely. You can use what are called virtual private networks. Uh, if you've heard of, uh, probably seen commercials for NordVPN, which is a virtual private network, it provides a, an extra layer of security uh, when you're, 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 you're sharing files from one place to another. Uh, so there are ways that you can minimize the risk of your data being compromised. Nothing is 100% because we didn't build these particular processes and, 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 and this, this equipment, uh, and we don't own it or control it, but we certainly pay to use it. And uh, unfortunately, there, there is a risk associated with it. But if you're running your business and you are looking for ways to scale, using some of these cloud-based providers is the way to go. Uh, also, conduct teleconference calls to communicate with your team. Very easy to do if you're using something like Microsoft Teams or Zoom, 
or blue jeans. You can just jump on a call. It'll, that'll look just like this. Uh, Google Meets, very easy to do. Many of us have used platforms such as uh, WhatsApp, or I believe uh, Apple has FaceTime. Very simple to do. Uh, communicating in that way will certainly keep information um, being shared at, in real time so that your business can operate more efficiently. Again, communicate quickly using messaging apps and consider a VPN for additional security if you are concerned uh, about uh, your security. Next slide, please. Use social media to conduct customer service. Sites like Yelp, uh, sites like um, Google Business, it's, it's, it's really important for you to utilize these sites. Uh, and even if someone leaves a bad review, address it immediately. Don't try to get it eliminated, just address it. Uh, it goes a long way with someone because no one's perfect and no business is perfect. We've all had bad experiences. But if you show people how you resolve these issues right away in real time, that goes a long way and it helps you to build your brand. Set up an online help desk or ticket system to handle customer issues. Depending on the nature of your business, there are companies like Zendesk that allows you to outsource a help desk or a ticket system. So it's certainly worthwhile if you are selling a product and someone may need to communicate uh, about that product with you. Allow clients to schedule appointments online. Goes without saying, having an online scheduling system is convenient for everyone. Uh, let everyone know your hours of operation. That way they, 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 they have the opportunity to reach out to you um, very easily from any device. And use online surveys and questionnaires to get custom, customer feedback. Very important, you know exactly how you're doing in real time. If you're addressing a particular issue that this customer had, it goes a long way. The world sees it um, and it allows people to get familiar with your business and how you address issues. We seldom leave uh, positive feedback when we've had a good experience, but many people will leave negative feedback if they had a bad experience. It's okay if they've had a bad experience with a product or service you provide or an employee uh, that you hired, address the issue mitigate the risk going forward and allow people to see how your business treats its customers. Uh, and that's going to go along with, with building out your relationship management process. Next slide, please. Create a mobile office that allows you to work from anywhere. Many of us have been working from home for, for quite some time. Um, very important for you to, to create a space, whether it's in your home, whether you're using a co-working space or if you're just working from Starbucks, uh, depending on where you live, you may have uh, the opportunity to work in a coffee shop or a library, but create a mobile office that allows you to work from any, anywhere, whether you're using a tablet, a laptop, or your smartphone, as long as you're using these cloud-based apps, you can access these apps from any device. Um, it's, it's going to help you become a lot more efficient. You want to make sure that you're taking time for yourself, you're not letting the work consume you because it's very easy for us to get caught up in these notifications and these calls. So just make sure that you are practicing um, uh, or you are incorporating balance in, into your, 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 your life because the lines between our personal and professional lives has gotten blurred. I don't see that going away. Many of the experts don't see that going away anytime soon. Uh, but it's all about how we are managing our professional and our personal space, maintaining our well-being and shutting off the device at the end of the day, uh, whenever you're, you choose to end your business day. Go paperless to save money on supplies. Again, uh, paperless invoicing through your accounting systems and using your devices to capture data. It's going to go a long way. Use your smartphone and select apps that sync with the cloud to stay connected. Uh, again, goes without saying, accessing these apps on any device at any time and familiarize yourself with G Suite for Business or Google Workspace or Office 365 productivity platforms if you haven't done so already. Many of us uh, are using um, either uh, Macs or PCs. Uh, I'm not sure about the Apple business ecosystem, but I do know that Apple has some productivity apps 
If you're a Mac user or you're, you're an Apple user, then play with what works for you. I do know that there is a, a Google Workspaces and there's also Office 365 for Mac users or for Apple users. So that'll give you the opportunity to use these platforms if you're an Apple user and you won't miss a beat. Next slide, please. Now, there are a variety of resources. I know I mentioned uh, many different platforms, uh, many different apps. There are thousands of them. And again, there are, of, there are hundreds of thousands uh, when, you, when you bring in the industry-specific apps. But look at it from a functional standpoint. What do you need for your accounting suite? What do you need for your marketing? What do you need for your customer relationship management? What do you need for your human resources? What do you need for operations? Uh, which social media platforms work best for you? Is it Twitter or is it uh, LinkedIn? Figure out whether or not, or figure out if you need um, task management or project management software to help you identify and eliminate tasks during the day. By looking at it this way, it will help you digest uh, the entire process a lot easier and allow you to focus on what you need that's going to help you run your business more efficiently, effectively, and profitably. Does anyone have any questions? No questions? We have a few hands raised, great. Looks like we have a question from Bissy. Can you unmute Bissy and Bissy unmute your mic? There you are. Hi, can you hear me? We can, yes. yes. Awesome. So my question is, if you were mentioning, is it called QuickBooks Live where they can help you out with bookkeeping? the platform? Yes, yes was, that's correct. Do you have any personal experience with that? Because I have a small side business. I need to set up the, you know, bookkeeping and accounting for it. My accountant isn't very user friendly with these <laughs> tech things. So like, I need someone to help me get started with it, setting up the chart of accounts. And so I was wondering if that's something that you feel like they would be helpful with through QuickBooks itself. Yes. Uh, so QuickBooks Live, for, for, for the users of QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Live is a platform where you can connect with what is called a live bookkeeper. And a live bookkeeper will help you set up your chart of accounts. They'll reconcile your books and they will help you manage your bookkeeping. Now, uh, they have several tiers. And again, there's the, the bare bones uh, level of service. And then there's also their higher tier level of service where you're communicating with your bookkeeper on a regular basis is a little bit different, uh, but it's not full service bookkeeping. Sure. And I, I just want to make that clear. They will help you reconcile your book, your books. They will make sure that you have all of your reports uh, where you need them, but they're not full service. So if you have a question about, if you have a tax question, they're not going to be able to help you. Sure. But okay. they'll, yeah. they'll, they can certainly help you just get your books organized, structured. They'll make sure they reconcile the books on a, regular, on, a, on a monthly basis. And then you can share that information with your accountant or your tax advisor. Okay, I appreciate that. Because I, I do have bookkeeping experience, so I'm, I'm happy doing some of the maintenance. It's just that initial setup. And, and it's, since it's just a website, you know, you don't, you're not really sure if the person you're going to get is, is um, you never know, you never know if a website advertising a service is something. So it's great to hear um, you kind of give that inside knowledge of it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're not satisfied with your initial bookkeeper, based on the conversation that you have, you can certainly request a, a new bookkeeper. So uh, it's, a, it's a great service. Um, I highly recommend at least taking a look at it, having a couple of conversations 
and seeing if it's something that you can incorporate into your business. That's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Jeanette. Okay. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you so much for, for the presentation. My question is uh, related to the QuickBooks. Um, we used to have the QuickBooks desktop, um, eliminated the desktop. Now my bookkeeper has like only access to the QuickBooks. Um, I'm trying to transition them to QuickBooks Online. Do you know if there is any changes in terms of the functionalities between the uh, QuickBooks desktop versus going online? Uh, very good question. There are some differences in functionality. I don't know all of them specifically, but um, have you started the process of migrating the data? Not yet. I mean, I, I literally, while I was hearing you speak, I sent them an email because I feel as though right now I'm, I'm in the dark in terms of, you know, um, with the COVID and needing some, certain reports, I didn't have access to, to my books and it was very, it, it was not <laughs> an easy feeling, um, you know, to not be able to access my information where at the, de you know, that desktop level, I, I could. Um, so ha having them have all of that kind of power, um, it, you know, and not having access is, is making me uneasy. Um, you know, not that I don't trust them. It's, it's not being able to have access to my information when I need it. Right. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and, th and that's why I advocate migrating over to a cloud-based platform. So you have your data whenever you need it and you can access it from any advice. Uh, any device. What I would recommend is I would look for uh, what is called a, or who is called a quick, are you looking to migrate on your own or, or you have someone? No, no, I would, I, I mean, I would ask the bookkeeper because I, 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 you know, trust and value the work that they're doing. Um, Cause it, and, and for those of you who have not outsourced your bookkeeping, it's the best thing that you could do because mm -hmm. as small business owners, we spend a lot of time trying to, three o'clock, three or four o'clock in the morning, trying to invoice and trying to, you know, reconcile and stuff like that. And it, you're always behind the eight ball and you need to sleep. <laughs> um, so it's the, it's the best advice that, that, um, you know, someone gave me. So um, I pass it along, but um, yeah, I, what I wanted, what I want to do is transition like within the next week or so, you know, to make sure that, we're moving it from the desktop to online and um, not sure how, how we should go about that. What I, what I would suggest, uh, if your book, if your existing bookkeeper has done it before, uh, I would certainly work with them and ha to have them do it. If not, you can Google uh, QuickBooks Pro Advisors. Okay. And you can find a QuickBooks Pro Advisor in your area who specializes in migrating the data from QuickBooks desktop to QuickBooks online. Okay. Uh, really depends on your market and, and the particular QuickBooks Pro Advisor you have a conversation with. And um, some are better than others, some charge more than others, but they have certainly been vetted and they certainly um, have experience with the migration. I do know certain industries May if you're if you're in construction, for instance, there are certain things about QuickBooks Desktop that just haven't really been uh, optimized in QuickBooks Online, mm -hmm. which uh, which prevents a lot of people in the construction industry from taking advantage of QuickBooks Online. So it really depends on your industry. But if you ha have a conversation with a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, they'll tell you the pros and cons. They'll let you know what can and cannot be done, and whether or not. Uh, it's worth making a decision to 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 make the migration. Uh, yeah, but I think in the financial services. Um, so um, really, our invoicing is maybe contract work, you know, for um, fiduciary work that we're mm -hmm. doing for a particular client regarding the retirement or um, or you know billable hours for actuarial work. Um, but nothing really like quotes, you know, like or. It's not like um, or anything it's more like that. service. Yeah, it's more service or professional services um, work that we're doing versus 
you know, products or materials that we're billing for? Oh, you shouldn't have no problem at all. Uh, it's relatively straightforward with the migration. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions? Concerns? Thoughts? We do have we do have two hands raised. Paul, if if you can unmute your mic and well, it looks like Paul lowered its hand. Paul, you okay. can feel free to raise your hand for another question. We'll go ahead with Erica. Erica, unmute your mic, please. Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, good evening. And first, I just want to say thank you for these uh, webinars. They're very helpful. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. We can, yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, my question was in reference to the emails because that's where I'm experiencing, um, uh, like I have whew, about 5,000 emails and I just wanted to know what should I do at this point to move them into the cloud? Um, that was a good point because I was kind of getting a little overwhelmed with all that and I, I didn't actually know that I could actually do that and save them. Absolutely. Who are you using uh, for your email provider? Uh, I have um, Verizon. I have. Uh, I can use. I have another one with his like Outlook, which is Microsoft. Are you using the Office three sixty five? Yes. Suite that yes. We'll provide. Okay. Yes. And okay, great. So with Microsoft, your 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 OneDrive will allow you to actually save documents in their cloud. Okay. So I would okay. actually, yeah, I would, what I would do, so for instance, uh, you can archive your emails, but uh, as far as the attachments, I would upload all of those directly into OneDrive and categorize them okay. depending on your business and, and what you find to be the most advantageous for you. So for instance, if you want to label some uh, as marketing, others as human resources, others as uh, operations, really all depends on, on what you are comfortable with and how detailed you'd like to get. But removing them from your inbox is going to help you. Um, I have no problem with deleting emails. We, we have a lot of emails that we really don't need to keep. Uh, but the ones that are from individuals or, or uh, prospects, suppliers, vendors that you may need to refer back to, you can always archive those. But make sure that you're uploading any attachments uh, directly into the OneDrive. Okay. Thank you. Jeanette has another question. Can we unmute Jeanette, please? Jeanette is unmuted. Jeanette, you feel free Great. to speak. Hi there. Sorry, it's, it's me again. But um, I guess with regards to the um, the HR platforms, because there's always like a question, how much time do I have? Or can I take this day off? Or, um, you know, what's the policy around this? Um, and I guess, have you had any experience using Gusto or we, we use a separate payroll company that, um, so the bookkeeper does all the payroll stuff. Um, do you know if they only work with like HR aspects of it? and sometimes needing advice in terms of proper way of terminating someone if we had to, or, you know, like specific HR issues that come up in terms of disciplinary, if, if we had to discipline somebody, you know, mm -hmm. there's certain, because as small business folks, we want to make sure that we're following the laws, you know, too, in terms of what people, you know, employee rights and stuff like that. So do you know if like Gusto or any of those kind of has a support person that those kinds of questions could be asked? Yes, yes. Gusto does. <clears throat> so does, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. ADP, Paychex, uh, and Sparity, they all have the capacity to provide you with uh, advisory services when it comes to 
how you may need to document certain processes to make sure that you are uh, separating someone from service in the appropriate manner or you're compliant with the particular laws uh, in the city, state, or region that you operate in. So just to answer your question, they certainly do. And it's worth interviewing several of them, having a question or having a conversation, um, giving them different scenarios and they can tell you the full extent of their capacity. Okay. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So we have LaVar here to answer questions. Um, ask away. Let me ask you a question. What have, what are some of the largest challenges that you running your business have run into as it relates to technology? What are some of the challenges that you have had that you're either working through, that you have overcome either because you figured it out on your own or you had to get outside support can you share some of those challenges that you've had with technology? Maybe it would be helpful to someone else on the webinar. Anyone oh, sure. want to go? Sure. Uh, oh, were you asking me or were you asking the attendees? It could be, it could be either. As long as we get the information out and people are benefiting from it, whether it's sharing your personal experiences or some of those on the call. Why don't we start with you? Great. So, I will, <laughs> I will mention what you and I discussed prior to the webinar. So I was trying to figure out how I can get that great background that Marla has. And I found out because I'm using a Google Chromebook that Zoom doesn't have the capacity to provide you with a virtual background if you're using a Google Chromebook. I would have never known that. So if you're looking for certain functionalities, before you spend the money or before you make that investment, it's very important that you research uh, the capabilities that a device or a platform has. Because what you don't want to do is make the investment and it doesn't do exactly what you need it to do and you have to spend more money when you could have spent uh, X amount of dollars in the first place. Uh, also, I had a situation in the past where I did use at the time, uh, it was called uh, Google, well, G Suite for Business. And G Suite's functionality or cap capabilities have gotten a lot better over the last few years. But initially when I started using them, I was sharing a lot of documents with people who only used Office. So the conversions of certain documents, whether it was a contract or an agreement or, or, or a spreadsheet, when I try to convert the document, the format was completely different. So I spent a lot of time reconverting the document to make it look appropriate. And it was something that could have been eliminated if I had been working with Office 365 in the beginning. Uh, but I didn't want to buy that Microsoft Office 365 license. And I cut some corners there and I spent way more time correcting mistakes when I should have made the investment up front. So I will just say, you don't want to cut corners. You want to make sure you want to identify exactly what you need and make the investment. Nine times out of 10 it's tax deductible. Don't worry about it. It's going to save you money, time, and make you a lot more efficient in the long run. And that speaks to also the capacity of our devices to be able to accommodate upgrades. So there are some people who, who rarely do the upgrades on their computers, which causes computers to run slow or to not have the latest features that have come with some of the upgrades. So can you talk about the value of upgrades and when you should just get a whole new computer as opposed to keeping what you have and it can accommodate some of the the newer upgrades 
Uh, very good question. Uh, the, the thing about it is that technology changes so fast now. And for instance, I purchased this machine last year and uh, they've, they've released two new Chromebooks that are much better. Um, so it, 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 what I have is still functional, but what I would suggest the attendees do is to really research what your competitors are doing, if possible, um, what other people in your industry are doing, what they're using, how they're using it, and talk to the sales reps. If you're going to Best Buy, um, have conversations, ask people who know what they're doing, um, how these machines can be used. If I'm running a financial advisory business, uh, does this have the capacity to, for me to upgrade storage if I want to have internal storage? Um, what is the speed like? Because we need, uh, I, wanna, I want to create videos or I want to set up an external camera because the internal camera just doesn't meet the capacity that I need it uh, for. I want to create YouTube videos. Can I do that with this? Um, I would just ask these questions. And also, again, I, I mentioned external cameras, but any other external drives or equipment that uh, you may need in order to accomplish something. If you are a YouTuber or if you're just shooting these, these marketing videos, you may need additional cameras or additional devices that uh, you'll need to plug into your, your, your laptop. Uh, do you have enough USB ports? Um, I know we can, we can purchase a device that uh, provides you with the opportunity to expand your USB ports, uh, but you, you just wanna make sure that you have all of the connections. I had a, a situation where someone needed to plug in a, um, the, 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 the data cord that is plugged into, I guess the Verizon wireless router but the laptop didn't have that, that, that plug. And uh, it, it, it just prevented them from doing what they needed to do. So find out what you need. LeVar, you're muted. LeVar, you muted yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear LeVar. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, sorry about that. Um, but find out what you need for, to, to, to run your business. If you need external drives or if you need extra USB uh, portals or, or ports so that you can plug in your router to your laptop. Uh, I don't use that, so I don't have a port like that. But you don't realize that you need that until you need it. So figure out exactly what you need. Have a conversation with the experts price these devices and uh, stay on top of the technology because things change so often. New phones come out every nine months. Um, new laptops come out, you know, every six months. You don't need to buy new equipment on a regular basis, but you want to make sure what you are buying is going to be viable two years down the line. One of the things that we found or we learned during this pandemic and this time of shutdown is everything became technology driven. So whether it was transitioning from brick and mortar or seeing clients face to face, all of a sudden it, everything was Zoom and there were no hard copies being used. Everyone was transmitting documents electronically. One of the things we found is there were companies who were not able to upload documents. And so whether it was the system requirements for receiver or the using the wrong browser to try to upload those documents, we found that technology proved to be extremely challenging and frustrating especially not just in, in dealing with PIDC, but for several small businesses that were trying to access some of the disaster emergency funds were having challenges just uploading documents. And so can you speak to 
system requirements that people should be aware of so that they, and browsers that they're using so that they become more compatible with the receiver? Very good question. Uh, you also always want to make sure you, you have the latest version of your browser. Um, many people didn't have the capacity. Uh, they didn't have either Adobe Acrobat or PDF Viewer. So it was almost impossible for them to open up documents uh, or submit documents. Make sure you're, you're using what the industry standard is. Uh, we know that everyone uses PDFs. So make sure that you're using Adobe Acrobat or you have access to it. Uh, I would look into, again, what everyone else is using. I, I started out using Google for business, but at the time, a lot of people didn't use it. Everyone was using Office 365. So if that's the norm, then you may want to stick to that norm because when there is a situation where you're filling out applications, you're providing sensitive data, um, you're submitting a 4506T uh, to, to the Small Business Administration, and you don't, and you don't have the, the latest browser, so you can't autofill the document, you're going to be in a situation where you actually have to print it out, fill it out, upload it, run back and forth to Staples. It's very challenging, very time consuming. So again, just make sure you have the latest device devices, the latest browsers, and the, 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 the latest uh, access to the latest tools that everyone else is using so that you can accomplish these, these tasks. Great. Questions. Is there someone who wants to share their experience of figuring out what was the challenge, overcoming it, or maybe there is still a challenge and you're trying to figure it out? We have LeVar here available to you. It is 648. We have 12 more minutes, so we want to give you a chance to ask that question. It's just a few of you on the call at this point. Um, so feel free to ask your question. How about this? How about if we can take down the presentation, Jasmine, can we do that? And what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, I will ask you to start your video, unmute your mic, and let's just have a quick conversation for the next 11 minutes. Does that work for everybody? Can they, um, can we show their video? Jasmine, are we able to do that? I'm checking on that now, Marla. Oh, great. Okay, it looks like that function is not available for webinar. Okay. But so, everyone is able to raise their hand and speak at this time. Okay. Any feedback that anybody has in our last few minutes? Any comments? Jeanette, Bissy, go, go right ahead. If you would, Jasmine, if you could unmute them and everyone, if you could unmute yourself and let's just have everyone just open. Yeah, I, I, I feel- We hear you, Jeanette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just feel the need that having gone through so many challenges in the 18 years of being in business, I wish somebody would have told me some of the things that I experienced. So that's why I'm eager to share um, so that people don't have to be frustrated and discouraged. But one of the things that I think has helped us tremendously, especially now in COVID, is having that external um, cloud-based uh, document uh, center where um, we use ShareFile, um, where you can organize all your, your files and you can access them from anywhere. Um, so what was happening with us, a part of the frustration was that we had desktop uh, computers in our office and people were using their desktops to save documents. So if we were out of the office and we needed to access documents, we couldn't because they were in that particular um, computer. So once we kind of switched to um, the document storage, it has helped us tremendously because anybody could access them at any time. I mean, you have certain restrictions for employees, you know, to have access to, but 
especially now with um, the COVID, it has helped us tremendously in terms of being able to be responsive and, you know, finding the documents that we need, um, you know, to service clients. So I would highly recommend it as well. That's really important because COVID, the shutdown took everyone by surprise. And if there was not a contingency plan for how to operate remotely, it forced you. Um, so for those of you who don't, this is a good time now. We will post this webinar onto our PIDC blog, and I'll put that um, link in the, in the chat. But this is a good time for you to take stock of things that you wish you had had before the shutdown and go back over this presentation that uh, LeVar made and look at all of those options that you have for software um, in the cloud that you can take advantage of. And it is never too late. It is just never too late to, to start because this is a level of technology that even when the pandemic goes away, the need for technology, it has now made itself so painfully clear that it's here to stay. Uh, Bissy, jump right on in. Hi. Um, so one of, we were very fortunate in my, in my law firm day life, we were very fortunate um, that we've been, we've had remote work capabilities and been essentially in the cloud for um, a long time. And so that was hugely beneficial. We've, um, we've definitely been saved from those situations where someone only had, you know, local access to a document. Um, and, and so we were very fortunate to have the document management system in place. Um, with, with, all, with so much reliance on cloud and remote computing now, I, I do get nervous of being over re, overly reliant on it. So I am wondering, LaVar, if you have any suggestions for, you know, what, what are the sort of safeguards in terms of backups in place? And because we kind of like now our internet connection is our lifeline, do you have any suggestions about how to be prepared for something interrupting that? That is a, a very good question. Um, unfortunately, I do not. Um, you know, I've, I've actually experienced, well, I think all of us have experienced situations where the internet has gone out for a variety of reasons. Um, I, I just don't see how you can mitigate that other than um, if you have, like, for instance, if you have um, Wi-Fi in a house, but then you also have a different provider for your cell phone service and you have access to a mobile hotspot. Um, mm -hmm. That way you can kind of diversify your uh, internet access points. Um, I, but I, I would say from an infrastructure perspective, uh, it can be challenging, it can be very expensive. As you know, companies spend billions of dollars for, uh, to, to, to improve the integrity of their infrastructure. And, on a small business scale, it's just very challenging for us to do that. But taking steps uh, like maybe uh, investing in a virtual private network, investing in your own personal cloud that you keep right in the corner of your house, they have really small ones. Um, I, I think those are the ways that we can control the way we share and access data um, on our own. But it's, it's, it's one of those things because the cloud is so new and it hasn't really been tested yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that we may see something like that very soon, right. whether it's a terrorist attack or some kind of incredible data breach. Um, but, but that's why I say take precaution when it comes to what you're uploading. And this is not only the business cloud. This is your personal cloud. This is, this is your Apple cloud. Um, make sure that you know, what's in your phone is something that you would be comfortable with, 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 uh, if, if, if the data was breached, uh, it, it wouldn't be too distressing. 
Um, that's the only way that I can, I can um, say you can mitigate it because anything can happen. And we've seen this already. We've seen people whose, whose phones have been hacked. We've seen companies whose data has been breached. Um, again, I would just say take precautions, be as cautious as you can, uh, utilize some of the technology that's out there to kind of mitigate these, these breaches. And uh, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope, hope that <laughs> security gets a lot stronger and a lot better. Uh, yeah. Also, if you're using um, two-factor authentication, mm -hmm. that may help. Uh, again, nothing's foolproof, but uh, obviously we're seeing the rollout of more biometrics and that may, that may help to keep us a little bit more secure. I appreciate that. This has been a great presentation. Sure. Thank you for attending. You're on mute, Marla. Sorry, we have six people who are on. We've got three minutes left. We want you to either ask a question or share your experience, a challenge that you're currently having that maybe you haven't resolved or one that you were having and it looks like you are uh, figuring it out or you got help and figured it out. Something that you can just share um, with us. So let me ask, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Martha, I know you have a catering business. Were you using technology in the place of, I'm sure it wasn't a cash register. So tell me how technology helped you in your catering business. Are you there, Martha? Okay, how about ALM? Tell us about your experiences with technology. Okay. And a challenge, a challenge you overcame. Okay, um, I can just make it. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so to make this as real as possible, I've spent the last maybe 12 years learning how to build my systems from the ground up. I've never really used um, email marketing campaigns. I've tried them um, and they were too costly for me and I'm on a tight budget. Now, presently I'm using Infusionsoft, which was mentioned by LeVar. Um, and I'm only in the first month of using it. And it, it can be quite tedious for someone who is not very technologically um, versed. But because I build my own websites and such, I've transitioned from using PayPal to uh, using Stripe, I've been able to implement that using WordPress as well, integrating that. Mm -hmm. Now the issue for me will be challenging would be using the QuickBooks because I don't really trust the cloud. So that's gonna be a problem <laughs> for me. <laughs> I back everything up on two hard drives that I have here. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. <laughs> but I think what, of course, what LeVar, um, LeVar has said is true there can be an issue um, coming either way. You can get wiped out at home. You can get a flood in your house and lose your hard right, drives. Right, right. So that's something, you know, I have, I, like he said, I've not figured out how to mitigate that. So, you know, it, it's more, I think you have to make backups of your backups. But then again, in, if you're uh, getting things in real time, you can't be fast enough to back up everything. All the, so it, it, you got to really weigh the differences here, that's what I'm finding. So for me, it's still a continual learning process. That's all I can say. No, that's, that's great. It's, um, everyone is not, con oh, that, so that alarm is a PIDC software, our proprietary software, it shuts down automatically at seven o'clock. Um, <laughs> so. Well, this was great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, and, and we thank you. So it is now 7.01. We appreciate everyone who um, took the time to be with us. We said we were going to end at 7. It is 7.01. It's dark outside. Again, we encourage you go to our PIDC blog to review. See you, Martha. <laughs> to review this 
um, this webinar and take advantage of all of the software that LeVar listed, all of the resources that are lift, uh, listed, so you can make sure you are staying ahead of the game. And even if you're not staying ahead of the game, you just don't want to be behind. So stay where everybody else is so you are competitive in a market. Again, everything is turning to technology and you owe it to the growth of your company to make sure you are being as efficient as possible with your technology so you can spend the valuable time doing marketing, doing outreach, and generating revenue. So with that, um, LeVar, thank you so much for always doing an amazing job. We are very fortunate to have connected with you and to have you as our um, Business Builder Workshop professor. Thank you. Jasmine, my colleague, thank you for running tech on tonight, stepping in for Quinn. Please make sure everyone, if you are not on our mailing list to get our monthly newsletters, please make sure you go to the PIDC website, sign up for the newsletter and see everything that's happening in and around PIDC. So with that, um, we thank you. Have a great night. Make sure you sign up for Tuesday at nine o'clock, which is webinar number one of our six part mental health series called, Is It Just Me? Mental Health During the Time of COVID-19 and Civil Unrest. One hour, nine o'clock, the third Tuesday of every month from October until March. We will bring in mental health professionals, psychologists to answer questions, to give you the statistics. So if you are feeling the blues during this time, you are not alone. This is, this pandemic has really wreaked havoc on the psyche, the emotional and mental and behavioral health of everyone. And so PIDC is addressing it. We are partnering with Scattered Good Foundation and Spectrum Health Services. So make sure you're coming out with us and we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a, be safe, have a great evening. Bye.